Hey everybody, when I started this arbor trellis for this container garden, I knew I wasn't going to want to have to come out here twice a day to try to keep the containers moist. Being in containers, they easily dry out, and we needed a way to make sure that the plant stayed well watered. It seemed to me that the least expensive and best solution was going to be drip irrigation, but I have never done drip irrigation before. The most that I've ever come close to that is simply buying a soaker hose to use with the garden last year. So I went over to the hardware store and took a look at it and I can understand why drip irrigation might be a little bit intimidating. There are so many different parts and pieces to go together so that you can configure your setup the way that you need but if you don't know where to start it can be intimidating. So let me show you what I did to fix up our container garden with drip irrigation. Thankfully when we bought this home it was easy to determine where I wanted the garden to be because of the orientation of the sun and the lay of the land. Because of that we had a water spigot installed where we knew we would want the garden. So there's water very close by. To connect to this I'm going to first split the line using a Y splitter. That way I can still have a hose available to me for manual watering as well as using one for the timer and the drip irrigation. Now you will see that I have applied Teflon tape throughout the entire video but I'll just make a point that you make it easier on yourself by wrapping it around the threads in the same direction you are going to screw on your hose or the next connector in line. So just spin it around to the right I always find that three is a good number. It's never too little to stop the water and it's never too much that you can't fit the next connector on. The next thing in our setup is going to be the timer. This is the same timer I used last year in the garden and other than having to swap out the batteries, it's working perfectly fine. It allows me to choose a multitude of different options and I'm going to select to have this water for about 15 minutes twice a day. The next thing we're going to connect is a short garden hose and I'm going to attach the garden hose here rather than the components you'll see next because I like having the garden hose being what goes from the actual hose spigot to the garden and maybe there's nothing really to that it just makes me feel better. I can't really give you a good reason on why you should do it in this order. The next thing that we're going to install is a backflow preventer. Now backflow preventers are specifically made to make sure that any of your drip emitters that are on the ground don't suck dirt back into the system. None of mine should ever touch soil, but for the few dollars it seemed best to go ahead and have it and I can make sure that I don't have air get into the system which can cause problems as well. The next thing we'll install is the pressure regulator. Now I should say that both with the pressure regulator and the backflow preventer you need to make sure you're tightening them in the right direction. The connections make it fairly obvious, but there is an arrow on here as well to make sure that you know that the flow of water is going in the right way. If you are somehow able to install these backwards, the water will not flow and you could possibly hurt the device. This is a 25 PSI pressure regulator. And before you choose which regulator you need, you really need to have an understanding for which emitters you are going to use because some emitters require 25 PSI, like the drip emitters we will be using, and others require a 50 PSI. Mostly those are going to be your emitters that spin or spray the water throughout an area. With the 25 PSI pressure reducer in place, the next thing to install is this adapter. This adapter takes us from a hose fitting down to the quarter inch flexible tubing that we'll be using to actually transmit the water to the individual plants. Now as you can see I have all these components on one side of the arbor but I need to get the water to both sides and for me I think the best solution is going to be to run a transmission line from one side to another up and around the trellis rather than putting it across the floor where it might somehow be tripped on or cut or damaged in some way. I'm going to use these zip ties to connect the tubing to the arbor, but I'm being careful not to over tighten the zip tie, which could pinch and restrict the flow of water through the tubing. Now when I get to the other side, I can extend the tubing across the arbor 
horizontally. For now, I just need to support the tubing enough so I can measure how much I need, so I'm not going to put too many zip ties on to hold this up, but we'll put some more on later. Once I reach the end of the line, I'm going to terminate the line at an emitter. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't cut the line right at the end, but bring the line down to the soil, measure for where I want the emitter to be, and then cut it. Now I have a transmission line going all the way across the top of these containers and I'm going to go back and install a T connector so that I can add another line across the top of the other containers and I'll do the same thing and terminate the line with an emitter at the last bucket. I did decide to buy this tool to help me install the rest of these emitters and I'm really happy that I did. I'm sure it would have been quite a workout on the fingertips to try to push all of these different adapters and fittings into this tiny hose if I didn't have it. So I have to recommend that to you. First, make sure you know where you want to cut your transmission line and make a good, clean, perpendicular cut right through the line. Then using your tool, install one side of the T and then install the other side of the T. Next, measure out exactly how much line you need to get from your transmission line down to the where your emitter is going to be and cut off a section of tubing. Install the emitter onto one end of the tubing you just prepared and then install the other end to the T that you had prepared earlier. Then fasten these down using the zip ties. That's it. All I had to do is repeat that process numerous times, 17 times actually, because we have 16 containers that we're using to garden in, and also a potted kiwi that I am growing up this trellis. Here you can see how all of the emitters work, and I really do hope that one emitter is enough for this container, and I think that it will be. But if for some reason we find out that there's just not enough moisture getting to the corners, I'll be sure to let you guys know in another update. So that's it. That's how we're going to make sure that the container garden for our arbor trellis does not dry out. If you all have any comments, tips, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment sections below. As I said, this is the first time I've done drip irrigation, so I don't expect that I've done it perfectly. What I do want you to know is that even if you've never done it before, it is fairly easy to do, and it's not something that should intimidate you. Jump in feet first and just give it a try. It's a whole lot easier to try to learn this one time than to have to worry about making sure your plants get watered every single day by hand by you. And now that I've done this one time, I have no concerns. I feel like I fully understand it and could repeat the process, buy the right things that I need, and take care of business anytime. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.